up in a JPL production of Blender 2.8 tutorial. There is a newer version out. Make sure you download that if you have not yet. Um, otherwise, we're going to be using 2.8 to show you today. All of the objects you see here with the exception of the buildings are downloadable at our website, djplproductions.com. And these are for free in our city packs beyond. Um, we're going to get straight into this. I assume that by now you know at least the basics of Blender with regards to the layout, um, the, the tools on the left, the top, how to add objects. I'm going to fly through this pretty quickly to show you how easy and quickly you can make an object. So as I'm going through these steps, it's going to be pretty fast. So just make sure you know the parts you know. But if you miss something, just go back because it's really easy and uh, and you won't miss much because there's not a lot of steps to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by clearing all of this stuff here. So I also I also am uh, assuming that you know the shortcut keys. So A to select everything um, or all. Um, e for extrude, S for scale, G for move, um, those kind of things, the number keypads, one and all that. Okay, so the first thing we've done here is we've added a circle. Okay, now we're going to go into edit mode, as you can do at the top left, or hit tab on your keyboard, and uh, we're in vertex selection. Okay, so we're going to hit A to select all of these, and then we're going to hit F to fill. Then we're going to hit one on our number pad and we're going to hit E Z to extrude along the Z axis and raise this thing up, make it into a cylinder. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit S and we're going to scale this thing. So you see, we've got a cylinder here and we're going to go ahead and scale the top a little bit, just to size it where we want our trash can to be at. Now you can do this to your preference, of course, but I'm just kind of going based on what I can think of or what looks right to me as a trash can. And as you can see, we have that. Now we're going to select this top uh, circle here and we're going to go down to, we're going to right click and go down to separate by selection because we need that circle to make the lid for the trash can later. So we're back in edit mode here. Now we're going to tab over to uh, object mode. Now you can alt click and it will let you select the object you're trying to select, whichever one. And we're going to select that circle and we're going to hit H to hide it. After we hit H, we're going to go back into the edit mode, which we're in now. And we're going to click this circle and we're going to hit I and inset it just a little bit. Now we've changed to wire view mode so that we can see what we're doing on the inside here. And we still have that circle selected. And now this is the inset circle and we're going to hit EZ and we're going to extrude this back down. There we go. We're making the thickness of the trash can. Now, once we got it where we want it, we're going to hit S to scale it again. And we're going to scale down and make this thing where it's not outside of its own edge. Boom. All right. And as you can see, we already have a trash can. It's pretty quick pretty straightforward um, I don't want to beat around the bush because a lot of tutorials I've seen they you know they do a great job uh, at teaching but there's a lot that isn't straightforward um, so you see we've got a trash can here we don't have any lights or anything like that um, to light it up or illuminate it uh, but this is what it looks like for now the next thing we're gonna work on is making the lid which is also straightforward but there is a trick to the handle. Um, it's really a straightforward, simple process. My phone's over here going off. Hopefully you guys don't mind that. Um, but it is a straightforward process. We hit tab to go back into object mode and we're going to hit alt H and that will give us that circle back in our view. So now we're going to click on that circle and we're going to hit tab to go into edit mode. Because we're going to make our lid. All right, so now we're in edit mode. We're gonna hit, we're gonna click on the circle, right? And we're in, uh, in case you don't know, we are in face select mode. Um, what we're gonna do now with this face selected is we're going to change our view by hitting one on the number pad to go to front view. And then we're going to uh, extrude this. First, we're gonna lift it, G, Z, well, let us raise it. And then EZ is going to extrude it again. So now we're making this lid here. And now we hit I. 
and we bring it in just a tiny bit and we're not going to change our view we just got to kind of play this by eye if you want to do it this way it's the simplest and then we're going to hit e and z and extrude it back upward so we just went to about the width of the opening of the trash can at the top. Now we've got a lid. Look at this. It's pretty straightforward. Like I said, there's no beating around the bush to it. Um, doesn't need to be dragged out too much. Uh, change our view so we can see it a little bit better. And as you can see, this thing, uh, it needs a handle. So we're going to go ahead and give it a handle. Um, but you can see right now it's already a trash can with a lid. Uh, just needs the handle on it and if you can make this you can really start to make other things so what we're going to do next is we're going to go into our vertex se selection mode and we're going to select two vertices that are directly across from each other that are close to the middle of our uh, our shape here and we're going to hit gg and that's going to allow us to move those the same uh, amount so that they're proportionate to each other because we want these to be pretty horizontal um, and directly across from each other because it's going to be a handle and the handle has a set width pretty much and we're going to select two other ones we're going to hit gg by the way to get to this view we hit seven on the number pad so that we can see the top down all right so now that once we have those where we want them we're going to select the two that we just had and we're going to hit j and j is going to join those two now when you join these it will split the geometry the face the reason that's important is because if you hit f it will connect them but it won't split the face and we need to split the face here because we need the additional geometry to be able to shape this handle out so we've got those two joined and as you can see the face here is is two different pieces and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select the other two vertices that we did that we moved initially and we're going to join them as well once we hit J, then that will join them and it will further split the geometry. By the way, this video was recorded in advance and I'm doing the voiceover after because I like to cut out all the other stuff. Because when I'm making it, I actually do a lot of talking and I realize it's not all necessary. So uh, what we've done here is we've created three faces by joining those vertices. And now we're going to select this middle face and we're going to inset it. Hit I to inset and then we will size it down to where we actually need it to be for the handle. So we won't get all the way there, but once we click, that looks good. We're going to hit S and X, and we're going to scale it along the X axis to close that width in a little bit because it doesn't need to be as wide as this. We need it to be smaller. So as you can see, we're sizing this down here. That looks good. Yep. All right. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to actually hit E, and we're going to extrude this shape up to give us a, a box or a prism on top of our lid and that's what we're going to shape the handle out of now there's another way to do this which we're going to do here shortly but first i'm going to show you how to split this stuff and then ultimately what we'll be left with is a few faces that will be the shape of the handle and then we'll just extrude them now i do want to say um right now what we're about to do is we're going to do some cuts here and uh, some loop cuts control R will give you a loop cut option and you'll see when you hit control R it will show you a line that pops up when you go to the middle of, of an edge so you see here we have this where it will allow it'll allow us to split this shape now if you roll your mouse scroll wheel it will add more loop cuts nothing is set by the way until you click so don't click until you know which kind you want to do so we're we can either do a vertical or a horizontal if you go by the vertical edges it'll give you the horizontal cut if you go by the the horizontal edges it'll give you a vertical cut so before you click though you want to scroll up or down for however many cuts you're trying to put into your shape so in this case we just need two but you can see you can add more and more and more um, so we're going to just scroll back down and just do two and when you click it's going to want you to it's going to allow you to move those cuts along the plane 
Now, if you don't want to move them and you want them exactly there, click and then right click. But you can see here, it's going to allow me to move it. But if you right click, it will automatically set in the initial position that they were placed in. And then from there, you can edit it. So we're going to right click. And now they're set. So we're going to do another loop cut because we need to do a horizontal one so that that way we can actually make this into a handle. But first, we're going to slide both of these cuts to the positions we actually need them in. So you can see how we're only editing one side of this because it only adds the loop cut to the face that you're working on unless it's... Uh, and, and well, actually, honestly, I don't really know why it didn't because normally it would actually go all the way around. I'm not quite sure, but we're going to work with what we have. But first, another thing, these edges here, we're going to go ahead and dissolve these edges because we don't need that geometry. So if you right click, go down to dissolve edges. Now, mind you, in order to select edges, you need to be in edge select mode, right? It just makes sense. So go ahead and delete these or dissolve these, don't delete them because you'll delete that whole face. Dissolve these edges because there is a difference. There we go. Now, all of them didn't dissolve and I don't really understand why it does that sometimes. So what we end up doing is just deleting them. See, it's not wanting to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and end up deleting these because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fill this shape in anyway um, to make it one solid piece again because I don't want anything connected to it. So we're going to click on these and then we're going to go to delete and then edges. And now you can see by deleting those, it's already deleted the whole plane. So each of the edges that make this area here, we're going to select those and then we're going to hit F to fill them. Now, you need to make sure that you select all of these edges. There's actually six of them all together. So there's this one right there. There's this one. Then there's these two. And then there's the other two. If you don't select all of them, it won't fill the entire area. And we want that whole thing filled. So by, to fill it, hit F. And then what we're going to do is now we've got this nice cleaner geometry and we're going to go ahead and dissolve these main edges so that they're just gone. All right. So now we've got the handle on top. Now, it's not technically connected to this uh, lid anymore, but it is connected because it's part of the same object. So no matter what you do, if you're in object mode and you're animating or something, it's going to move with the object that it's part of. That's just how it works. So we're going to do loop cuts again, and we're going to do two of them. And we're going to right click. And it only did the half. So here's what we're actually going to do. We're going to move these after we add our horizontal loop cut. Okay. And then right click. Now, if you hold alt and click, it will select the entire edge loop. So otherwise, you would have to select both of those portions of the edge um, individually. But if you hold alt and click, it will uh, select that edge loop. So we're going to hit GG and we're going to slide these over to where we need them. So Alt. Well, that's just clicking and then Alt and click. As you see, it will select them and then GG and we'll move it over. Oh, there's my phone going off. Hopefully that doesn't bother anybody. Okay, so that looks like that's probably about a good spacing and then we're going to do the same thing with the other one alt and click and gg to move it over right so that looks pretty good now what we're going to do is we're going to move this one up just a little bit gg same thing we alt and click and then gg to move it and then we're going to delete this face we're going to go to face select mode and we're going to delete this face now as you can see we have all of this handle still there minus the one piece we just deleted and what we're going to go ahead and do is rather than fight with it and try to split it we're going to go ahead and delete all of these because what we're going to do is we're actually just going to ex extrude 
this face that it, we don't have selected. So let's delete this and then we're going to go straight to a shot here in a second where it's done. But we're going to take that face right there, all those faces, and then we're going to E Y to extrude on the Y. And then once we do that, it's all done. Boom. And you got an end. I know we missed that last shot there. That's because when I was recording this, OBS messed something up or it hit stop for some reason. I don't know. But you can see here these trash cans that we've made in here using the same techniques that we just did for that one. And it really could have been done a lot faster without the um, explanation. But, you know, of course, I'm trying to show you. Uh, but these that you see are completed with exception of UV wraps. Now, you can see here that all of this is easy to do and you can do all of that with the same techniques so make sure that you guys check out djplproductions.com and download these in our city pack one package uh, for free and uh, you can just import them in as, op as objects and use them in your animations they do come wrapped with the uv wraps already just no buildings thank you guys for watching make sure you guys check out the next tutorial on street lamps which will also be part of our city packs one download